Welcome to the Piedmont Triad Podcast. Before I get too old, I'm gonna head down to Muscle Shoals. Baby, you can meet me at the station. Welcome to the Piedmont Triad Podcast, where we explore the strange and unusual culture of the Piedmont Triad area of North Carolina. I'm your host, David Locklear, and you're listening to part two of our four-part continuing coverage of the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre Festival. On this episode, we talk with Paul Ray, vocalist for Greensboro metal band False Prophet. False Prophet was formed in the then musical barren wasteland known as Greensboro, North Carolina in the late 1980s as a three-piece by Paul Ray, Chris Linden, and Tim Heisman under the moniker Abattoir. They were soon to be joined by Mike Morrison and began their musical quest to create their brand of brutal assaulting metal. Taking their musical influences from mid-80s thrash from the West Coast like Exodus and Dark Angel, death metal pioneers such as Venom and The Possessed, and the metal hardcore ideals of the bands from the East Coast like Overkill, and the more melodically heavy music from Europe and created a sound that was both aggressive and technical. After recording an early demo entitled Sign of the Cross, released in 1989, False Prophet started garnering local and international attention, landing them opening slots for Danzig, Dark Angel, Forbidden, Death Angel, Confessor, and Demolition Hammer, among others. The band received great reviews and had numerous interviews with the underground fanzines and metal magazines alike, and around 1992, the band changed their name to Infernal Hierarchy. With the new name change, the band once again returned to the studio to record a two-song demo which would later be released on 7-inch vinyl by Rage Records in 1993. Once again, these songs showed the growing musicianship and songwriting that the constant practice and shows were helping the band to achieve, and after much success with this release, the band decided to disband this incarnation due to personal circumstances. Forward to the year 2013. And once again, the name False Prophet is beginning to create rumblings in the underground music community. With the newfound freedom of the internet, the band was approached by Heaven and Hell Records about re-releasing all of their previous material. They enlisted Jamie King, producer of such bands as Between the Buried and Me, to remaster all of their old recordings, and the results are spectacular, resulting in the release of The Second Death. Now, as they gear up for their appearance at the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre, Paul chatted with PTP about his love of occult horror movies, the hypocrisy of religious extremism in the South, and how his mellow southern accent is the complete opposite of his gnarly singing voice. their name so i didn't know if i'd inadvertently seen you guys years ago and just didn't even realize it no i mean we we opened for cannibal corpse there a couple of times oh that's it uh with uh suicide silence yes yes okay i have seen you guys all right that's awesome i, I was i was gonna say many people probably don't have a song called in satan's name so it's gotta be a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of what I was thinking too, especially around here. It's like, yeah, I, I don't think that's a common title. Yeah, we played a couple of shows with them, like that one with Suicide Silence, and we played with I think Cattle Decap and Cannibal later on. So yeah, that was us. Okay, well, that's awesome. Well, you guys, I do remember your show, <laughs> so I mean, that's a good thing because I got pretty drunk that night. I'm glad somebody remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, how did you guys uh, get hooked up with John McKente over at uh, the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre that's coming up? Uh, what uh, what brought that about? Uh, I mean, actually, we, John, well, Scott, our guitar player, he met John um, when they were on tour with uh, Dying Phoebus. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm an Incan fan, so I went to go see Incantation. And um, so, you know, Scott met John. So they kind of met first, but then he moved. He actually moved to Greensboro. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, of course, he started hanging around Scott. And then, you know, me and Scott are friends. So we all kind of started hanging around. And then, um, you know, he doesn't have he didn't have any like people here. So he started. Like, he asked if he could move in our practice hall. And so, you know, we 
we kind of share a space. He moved in with us, and we share a space. And we've got to be, you know, pretty good friends with John. He's kind of like family now. Yeah. Well, how cool is that, too, you know? Because, I mean, you're friends with him, and I, I was – when I reached out to him, I was really surprised that he lived in Greensboro, you know, because I was like, you know, incantation, they've been around for like 30 years. And it's like, they're, he's been living down the road. <laughs> well, he's only been here maybe, I don't know, maybe four, two, three, four years. He hasn't been here terribly long. Uh, mm-hmm. He's, I guess he was mainly in that Ohio area, which that's where they, you know, they usually go back to practice in Ohio and every now and then they'll come, practice in our, you know, our shared space, and, but yeah, I mean, uh, well, John's a, he's a super cool dude, man, he's like one of the most down guys I've, you know, met in the scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I talked to him uh, about two weeks ago, and it, it's always funny to me whenever I meet guys like him, who, you know, they, when they sing, you, it, they just sound like they crawled out of, you know, hell's basement. They just sound like they would in real life be scary, awful people. And they're always the most mellow and laid back and, Hey man, good to see you. You know, <laughs> it's always the opposite of what they seem like they would be. Yeah. It's funny. Um, he was, he was working on one of the newer albums a while back, probably, probably the newest one that came out. And, uh, he was practicing vocals down in our practice hall. And, um, you know, he was down there during the, like, you know, he was in there during the day and I guess somebody heard him and somebody was like trapped or hurt in the practice hall. So they actually called the cops and paramedics and they were like going all through the storage building, like looking for who was hurt or (laughs) it was kind of a funny story. (laughs) But if you talk to Don, you'll have to bring that up. It's funny as shit because, you know, he wasn't really. I guess he had headphones on, so he was just kind of singing along to the headphones. So it's like it was it was pretty funny when he told us that. I was like, Damn. like you ain't been here no time, you're already causing fucking trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, with you guys being uh, at the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre, um, I, I'm assuming that you must be, you know, also a, a very big fan of the horror movies and stories and things like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not as hardcore as some of these guys, like like John and his wife, Yo-Yo, and other people. Like, you know, they're all in. Like, they're just into it hard, which that's awesome. I mean, of course, mm-hmm. I like, and I, you know, I watch a lot of movies. I don't really, you know, I'm not really into it as much as they are, like, the, but it's cool, you know, to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that he's really trying to get a bunch of, you know, really good local bands. And when I say local, you know, like North Carolina bands, but I like that he's really trying to push something to support the local scene, you know, especially a guy like him who's been around for, for so long. It's yeah. nice to, you know, have somebody like that to give you guys, uh, you know, or, or to offer a platform, I should say, you know, considering all, all the stuff they've done. Yeah, and if you haven't, if you didn't hear about John and Yo-Yo's wedding, they had it at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre barbecue place in Texas. It, it was like, which we played that. He invited us to play, so you know we went out, we flew out to Texas, and we played one show the night before at a bar or a club, and then we played John's wedding the next day, and it was like really cool. To, Oh, that's so that's awesome! Fun. That's like a, a place that those are one of that's one of the places I want to visit in terms of like. Uh, it, it being sort of a horror mecca for me, you know, these places that still exist uh, from these old, old horror movies. That's so cool that you guys got to go and hang out there. Yeah, that was really cool, man. That was, that was a true. I mean, was... Are you big into uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I mean, I like it. I'm more into like the satanic, demonic stuff myself. Like that's the movies I kind of lean towards. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I watched it when I was younger, and, I'm, you know, I, of course, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, all the Halloweens and shit. And I mean, I'll even go back and rewatch them sometimes, because I think they've remade and redone all these movies, so it's, really, it's hard to watch, know what you're even watching half the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what is your favorite, you know, sort of occult or satanic-themed uh, movie or horror movie, I should say. 
I don't know, Witch was pretty pretty dark and simple. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked it. Probably the newest thing I've watched I liked was 30 Coins. 30 Coins? It, I don't think I've heard of that one. It's pretty dark. It, it, it's it's kind of slow going. It's starting off, and it's, it's all in Spanish, so you have to read subtitles, but... Mm-hmm. You know, like a, I don't, I don't really care for reading subtitles most of the time because I'm usually I'm multitasking. I was just kind of, you know, practicing my guitar, you know, late at night, and I put this on, and I was like, oh yeah. I just saw Thirty Coins. I kind of read the, you know, what it was about, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And it was in Spanish. I was like, fuck. <laughs> but then I started watching it, and I was like, I really got into it because it was such a cool concept, and it was. And then at the very end, it's just like it's it's sick. It's it's really dark. So it was, that's probably the newest thing I've watched and liked. <laughs> wow. Well, where did you find that? Because I, that sounds like that might be up my alley. I like it when my movies get pretty grim. It's on HBO. It's one of the Spanish HBO things. But you, yeah, just look up 30 Coins, man, and it's it's, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> okay, I'll do that because I, I love those kinds of movies. I, I like it when a movie just decides it's it's going to – completely lean into its idea to the point where you're just like, wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it was definitely pretty sick. I I tell everybody about it. I can, it's it's pretty cool. Well, what is it that you think, uh, draws you into, uh, you know, like satanic and occult themed stuff is, is there, you know, did, did you have a rough childhood or is it just something that, you know, is fascinating to you? It's probably because I grew up in the Bible Belt in the South and had it crammed down my throat, you know, since I was a kid. And mm-hmm. No, I mean, I had a fun, you know, my childhood was fine, man, you know, it wasn't bad, wasn't good, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, I can't bitch about it, but I don't know, man, I, some people you're just drawn to the darker thing. I mean, it's just like, you know, metal itself, you know, there's people that li- listen to Britney Spears and then there's people that listen to King Diamond, you know, <laughs> so I've just always been drawn to the heavier music, you know. Even when I was listening to music that wasn't as heavy, I was drawn to the heavier of that music. And then I would up it a notch, and then I'd get into that, and, you know, just, you know, grew on me. I just always liked the darker topics, and just, I don't know, just anything really dark is kind of, pulls me in yeah yeah well i was the same way I, I still am the same way honestly but um yeah i was the same way it was if i found something really heavy i'd stick with that for a while and then i would bump into something else and it would be really grim you know it was like subject matter and everything and i remember i bought a a cd one time uh it was by this band called face down and shit and yeah. i was like just the 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 group name alone was enough for me to be like, all right, I got to check this out. Even if it sucks, that's a great name for a band, you know? (laughs) So much to my wife's uh, dismay, uh, she has no interest in heavy metal and rock and all that kind of stuff. So she's just like, oh, great. You're listening to Face Down and Shit. That's what I want to hear today. (laughs) That's that's the majority of girls. They're not into that stuff. (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) That's that's always been kind of a drawback for being into this kind of music when you go to shows. This is like, man, you, you gotta if you were gonna hit on a girl, you had to have your A game, you know. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to actually like music where you can get paid and get girls, but yeah, that's not me. for some reason I like goddamn possessed and shit, like <laughs> instead of poison and <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, are you guys playing just one night at the uh, at the festival, or are you playing both days? We are going to do some songs on the Friday um, at the end. I think they're going to have like kind of a, just a jam thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I think we are going to do some songs, uh, maybe one or two that night. Mm-hmm. And Friday, you know, we'll be doing our set plus some extras. You know. Um, we're hoping we can kind of announce this as it gets closer to the show, just so something, if something does, you know, something doesn't fall through. If nothing falls through, we're going to announce it. You know, probably what we're because we've got a special guest coming in, and uh, we're going to do some songs from his old band. 
Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's well, that's intriguing. I'm, I'm, I know I'll be there, so I'm excited to to find this out. This is, it's like a mystery. Yeah, I mean, we won't announce it now, but we're just all, you know, with the way everything in the world is, and you know, it's hard to, you know, people just nail shit down and go, yes, I will be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when when it gets closer, and um, he can definitely make it. We'll, you know, definitely. But if he makes it, everybody needs to be there for this show with us. It's going to be pretty brutal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's one of the cool things that about you guys doing this over at um, the break time billiards on Jonestown is because, you know, that's like a, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump for me and a bunch of my friends. You know, we've, we've already been joking that it's like, you know, even if we get blind, drunk, stoned out of our minds, we can still walk home. It won't be that big of a deal, you know. Yeah, and it'll be a good show to see really big bands in a small venue. I mean, you're gonna see like Incan and you know, fucking God, who all is playing on? Um, well, uh, yeah, even Nuclear Assault. Like in, at, well, it's not the Blind Tiger now. We're gonna do it at Arizona Pete, so a um, little bit bigger venue, but still, you know, still a small venue for you know a lot of these bands. So. It's, it's kind of cool, and, um, you know, we're helping John out, you know, supplying backline, and, you know, we're going to be help, you know, be giving support throughout the day, and um, I think it'll be a really cool scene. I mean, John's putting a lot of effort in this, like a whole lot. Like, he just, he's just not throwing a bunch of shit together and calling it a festival mm-hmm. or an event, you know. He's really putting a lot of time and effort and energy, and, and, and uh, it, it, like you said earlier, it's really cool to see somebody that's not even from here trying to help the scene. Mm-hmm. So he's supporting lo- smaller local bands and us, you know, and it's it's just yeah, it's, it's really cool, man. What we're trying to do. So if it's you know if if the turnout's good, it's a positive event and. Of course, if it makes money, you know, you can do it next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, maybe bigger and better, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's one of the funny things about this show is I think this is the first show in a while that I've made the conscious decision not to ask for any kind of, you know, like press pass and whatnot. I'm, I'm literally like, I'm going to pay for a ticket because I want this to work. You know, I want this to keep coming back. I want this to be a regular thing around here so that, you know, our, our music scene is expanded to, towards uh, metalhead tastes, you know? Yeah, more people need to be like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, even after COVID, people still want in free. It's like, dude, these guys have been out of work. Like, I've been to multiple shows where I could have got in free. Actually, I was on the guest list. Mm. But, but I bought a ticket. Right. Because I know these guys have been out of work for years, especially guys that are true professional. Like, you know, they're, they're people that don't have full-time jobs during the day, and, they, you know, they're, they plan when they go out on tour, you know. I try to support these guys. And, like, John is definitely one of them guys. I mean, he's a full-time musician. So, mm-hmm. and, I mean, I know if I just said, which I think John had me on the guest list, but I just bought a ticket to support, you know, them, you know, so yeah. the same thing with obituary, obituary came through not long ago. Same thing. I was on the guest list, but it's like, Hey, you know. yeah. Didn't you, you guys opened for them too, didn't you? Yeah. We toured with them. Like I think in, like right before COVID struck, like 20, like December, 2019, we did like a East coast run with them. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, I I vaguely remember that because I I wanted to go out to the show, but it, I think I had a family commitment or something. I can't remember exactly what happened. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's cool that you do the same thing too. You know, I mean, I've I've heard plenty of guys in other bands who are the same way where they if they when they want to support something, they they'll actively be like, "No, nah, man, I made some money. I'm going to support you." You know, they you know, and usually it's like kind of a you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, even though that's not what you're trying to do. It's, it, I think that's just sort of the symmetry of the scene in a way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because you hear all this shit, you know, you hear the guy, usually the ones that cry the most about nobody supports them 
are usually the ones that don't support anybody else when it's their, you know, like they don't come out to shows. If they're not playing, they don't come out. Mm-hmm. If, they're, if their band's inactive, like even when I'm on Facebook, if my band's not doing anything, I'll share and push other people's. You know, if I see, you know, another cool band that I like, guys that I like, I'll push, you know, I'll share it and try to get the name out and help them out, you know. It doesn't cost anything just to share stuff and get people to see it. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, a hundred percent, you know, we, and I, I think a lot of people are, it's, it's just a shame that there so many people are really cheap when it comes to that kind of stuff. And they don't realize that, you know, when, when you pay you know, 10, 20 bucks in order to buy a ticket to go to see a show that you're literally supporting them to make sure that they can keep doing this. If you like it, then that is how you guarantee that this will continue to move forward. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's a ticket sold, you know, the more tickets, a uh, venue, you know, if you have a promoter bringing in bands and this band sells this number of tickets, they go, Hey, these guys have a good draw. We need to bring them back. And you know, that keeps them going on the next tour. Like, Hey, in cans going out again, we need to get those guys here. Mm-hmm. I mean, because mm-hmm. there's tons of bands going out right now that aren't even coming anywhere near us. I, I know, and and that's one of the things, you know. It's like there's so many, there are bands that I, if I'm surprised a band comes around here, I make sure I pay for it uh, because yeah. there have been plenty that I've longed to see, and they. It's like it always gets North Carolina always gets skipped over. It's like it goes Baltimore, Virginia, Atlanta. You know, <laughs> yep. yeah, that's why when people see North Carolina shows like Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, Winston, they need to go. They need to support. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, you know, the, the first group of shows or you know the the first few tours like during COVID, I mean, they were crushing. Mm-hmm. But then you are, then you start hearing, you know, it wasn't long. I, I started hearing, you know, well, it's too far away or. You know, I don't, uh, you know, just you start hearing the excuses and it's kind of funny because all through COVID, all you heard was, man, I'd do anything to go see a band. And then once they start touring again, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, well, I'll see them next time. (laughs) Right. I know. It's just like, dude. (laughs) I mean, you know, the way the world is, there might not be a next time. You better go see them. (laughs) Right. I know. And I mean, you, you, and also, uh, you know, if, what if the band breaks up there, there's, exactly. you know, you're, you're well, never, uh, yeah, that frustrates me badly. I mean, it's just like me, I'm like a huge possessed fan. Possessed broke up when I was still in my teens. Yeah. I never got to see possessed play live. So they had been back together for a while and I, you know, I kind of watched them and kept up with them and, um, our guitar player Scott, you know, he builds custom guitars, and um, he hit me up one day. He said, "Hey man, you ever heard of Possessed?" I was like, "Well, fuck yeah!" <laughs> and he starts telling me about, you know, well, I got this guy who plays guitar and Possessed, Claudius Kramer, and he wants me to build him a guitar. And I was like, "Well, then you should do it." <laughs> so, long story short, you know, we got he got to know those guys and. They were playing up in New York somewhere, and, you know, I was kind of torn. I was like, oh, man, that's a long way to go to see a band, and Scott's like, might be your last chance. You never know, and I was like, you know what? You're right. Mm-hmm. So we got we got plane tickets. We flew into New York or Jersey, somewhere around that area, and then it ended up being like a full weekend. I ended up renting a car and picking up half the guys in Possessed and hanging out with them all weekend and, you know, actually got to be good friends with those guys. And so not only did I get to see them play, I got to hang with them and get to know them. And, you know. Wow. Oh, that's so, awesome, know. man. You got to meet, you literally got to meet your heroes and you liked it. That's a good thing. Yeah. Those guys are like super, those are the best guys in the world man all of them they're all really great guys and they're also all fucking amazing musicians <laughs> like jeff probably has one of the best bands out there as far as musicians these guys are just on point <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And, and I think a lot of people that don't see bands like that play live, I, I don't think a lot of people get a full appreciation for it until you see how difficult it is to play a lot of those types of songs. Yeah. And play them right. I mean, like, you know, they're not butchering them. Like, they're playing them, you know, they're playing all the leads and everything pretty, pretty damn close. And then, of course, their new album, Revelations, you know, goddamn, they <laughs> crushed. It. I mean, that's like, when that thing came out, you know, I was just like, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I haven't listened to that one that much uh, because I, I th- oh yeah, because I got this weird little box set up in Asheville a few years ago. It's called, um, it's possessed, and it's called, uh, it's called demonic, but it's like demos, okay. and it's like literally nothing but possessed demos. And I kind of wore that one out, and the new album went by the wayside. So I haven't really given it an honest listen just because I was listening to all these you know, butchered, bizarre, like early takes of the exorcist, you know, and whatnot. <laughs> and, yeah. And it was really good. So I haven't given that an honest, uh, listen, I need to check that out. Cause you sound like yeah. you're giving it an endorsement. It's, it's a good album, man. And I mean, you know, like with Jeff not playing bass anymore, he, he has a different, he, the way he, he approaches his phrasing now, it's like you're just getting verbally fucking assaulted through the whole song, the way he sings now. It's like, and his voice still sounds fucking good. You know, he's changed up a little here and there, but it's still possessed. Like, you know, they, you know, like a lot of old bands, man, they do shit, you know, like, like, cause they don't tune down. They're still in E, mm-hmm. you know, so they're not doing the, t- drop tunings and lower tunings they're like staying true but the music is definitely more technical and more brutal in my eyes i mean i mean you know I, like you know seven churches is probably one of the top 10 death metal albums of all time and mm-hmm. i would definitely put revelations up there with it <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you one of the people that really like... I forget the name of their second album, but I know their second album kind of divided fans a little bit. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Was it Beyond the Gates? Yes, Beyond the Gates. Uh, What did you think of that one? I mean, I thought it was good. I mean, there was definitely really good songs, and then there were some really bad ones. I I don't... Yeah, I I mean, I, I know what you're saying. I think it was definitely an album. Yeah, it was one of those weird ones that when it came out, I, I feel like they weren't as revered for some reason. Yeah. I, I, I don't, it, it's almost like the first album was so good, they were inevitably going to get backlash no matter what they did. And that's kind of a shame. Yeah, and it's, you know, if musicians ever were honest with themselves or with fans, you know, your first album you write, you have years and years and years and years of material. Mm-hmm. And you've played these songs for years and years and years and years. So you're like at the you're at the top of your game with these songs. You're tight. You're you know you're everything you know. You've got everything worked out. All your vocal phrasing, you know. But a lot of bands stumble on that second album. Mm-hmm. You know the really good bands. You know they crush the second one and they crush the third one. Mm-hmm. It takes, you know, a lot of albums before they start really stumbling. Because, yeah. You know, it's kind of like playing sports, man. You can't hit a home run every fucking time you're at the bat. And writing a song's the same way, man. I mean, there's good songs, there's great songs, and then there's fillers, and, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if a lot of musicians were honest with people, I, they would probably say the same thing. I mean, you know, you, hope, you when you write a song, you hope for the best. You like, you know, you write what you feel in that moment, and that's really all you can do. Yeah, yeah. I I remember uh, an interview with uh, Glenn Benton of Deicide. He was talking about their album "In Torment in Hell." And he was explaining that the reason that that album sucked so bad was because it was like the last in their contract. 
And so he's, they were basically like having a hard time with the label. And so they just gave him a shitty record because they didn't care. And, and then he was like, yeah, we shouldn't have done that because that pissed a lot of our fans off. And we lost a lot of people because of it, just because we wanted to be dicks about it. And he's like, and then we had to turn around and write really good stuff to make up for the shitty ones that we just finished. (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, you know, as a musician, I mean, you're going to look at that different. Like, I, I can see both sides of that. I can understand, you know, getting dicked over by a label and being pissed off. But I can also see I wouldn't want to put out a shitty album, you know, for people to remember me by either. I mean, you know, but I, I do, un, you know, I understand. I mean, I understand the, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, well, the inclination it. to do that, just be like, man, fuck you guys, and then. The fans are yeah. like, you're an ass. And it's like, oh, no, it wasn't at you. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're not the only band that's done that. They're probably one of the few that's admitted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I took away from it over the years was it's like, yeah, most of the time bands are going to be like, no, no, we were just in a weird place. And he's like, nah, I was mad as hell at the label. Fuck them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at least he was honest, man. I mean, you know, they should give him at least perks for that shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always kind of refreshing to hear that, for sure. Um, Well, uh, listen, man, Uh, I I don't want to... I've, I've kept you on for about 30 minutes. I don't want to take away from your day too much, but... Um, I mean, you, I'm good, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Well, you know what? Before I go, I actually... um. My uh, my buddy Buddha, uh, Jason, is uh, is our sort of connective tissue, and he was over here this weekend. He's really pumped about uh, going to see you guys at, at the festival. I'm probably going to be hanging out with him at the show, so uh, I'll, I'll I'll definitely come by and, and and bother you for a minute. Hopefully, I won't be too wasted by the time I do, though. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, tell tell Jason to come on. <laughs> It'd be a cool show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how did you guys uh, meet? I never got a chance to ask him that, so I'll ask you. Uh, I actually met him at Guitar Center um, through a mutual friend that worked there. Like you know, I was I'd started playing again, and um, the guy who used to build and work on my guitars, he no longer really does the service side. He just builds. So um, you know, Jason was working there and let him work on a couple of my guitars. I really liked what he did. So I mean, I actually. You know, liked him working on my stuff, but he got the same way, man. He got burned out and mm-hmm. didn't want to mess with it. But yeah, we met through basically the guitar center and him working on my guitars. Yeah, he's he's always been really good at that stuff. I've known him since high school, and you know, I'll just it, it, I play guitar badly. I'll just put that out there. It's like I I noodle and I'm shitty at that, and. But whenever I'd have a technical question about, you know, how to, you know, my guitar's doing this or something else is going on, I would ask him. And, you know, he he was just like a fountain of information. So it, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, he's he's made a good impression over the years with his talent. You know, I, I think that's awesome that, uh, you know, people love what he does. Oh, yeah, Jason's awesome. I mean, it's hard to find, you know, good people to you know, work on your stuff. I mean, to the point that now I, I pretty much do, I do as much as I can myself, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I imagine that that's probably kind of a uh, sort of zenish for you, you know, to sit there and, you know, fix your guitar, you kind of focus on it, think about it and whatnot. That seems like it'd be kind of a good way to center yourself a little bit. It kind of is. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, you, I don't know. I guess when I was younger, man, because I didn't learn how to do that shit. I was kind of, there was like almost something mystical about it to me. Like you would hand your guitar to this guy, and he would just magically make it play better and sound better, and then he'd hand it to you. So it was kind of like now I look at it like, okay, it's a tool. I gotta straight the neck, or I gotta do the full something. But when I was younger, I just had a different mindset about. It cool you know somebody could do that and hand it to you and you'd go oh this is awesome right yeah i i I was the same way i remember when i was about i guess 15 or so i had this old i've still got it somewhere this old shitty guitar it was like a gibson knockoff and the uh the strap the the screw that holds the strap in got stripped and i went up to pearson music and and i'm like oh i don't know how to fix this and i'll never forget it the guy goes Oh man, what you do is you just mash a bunch of matches in there, 
and that shit will stay. <laughs> <laughs> It, it kind of took the edge off of the mysticism that you were talking about, because I was like, matches? That's it? <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, how the sausage is made. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't want to know how the illusion's done. <laughs> yeah, it's... You it, want it, wanted to be pretty at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, I, I want my David Copperfield show. I don't want to know that he's got a woman hiding under the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, listen. Uh, oh, tell everybody where you got where they can find your stuff, like on Facebook and Instagram and all I- anywhere you post stuff. Um, let them know where it is so they can find you. Yeah, Facebook is probably the best way to catch us. We, you know, we're pretty accessible. You know, if people message us. You know, we try to respond. Um, that's where we post. You know, any shows, any merch, anything going on. And um, of course, if they want to listen to music. Probably Spotify is the easiest way to get us, you know. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. I mean, we try to keep it kind of simple. Mm-hmm. And do you guys, uh, when I listen to you on uh, Apple Music, do you guys have more albums uh, besides uh, Second Death? And um, uh, what was the other one you guys released? Uh, oh, uh, the self-titled in 2019. Uh, do you have more? Are those the only two releases you have? We have like an EP we did uh, right before the obituary tour, mm-hmm. um, and that, so we got Sign of the Cross, which was like our first demo, and then we got Second Death, you know, first album, and then we have the EP for you know we did an obituary, which will be the newest material, and then of course you know we're working on trying to record another full length, um, hopefully, <laughs> you know have it released before the end of the year oh awesome okay all right uh what are is there anything you're trying to do that's a little bit different on the new release or is it you know you guys trying to stay in your lane and just you know really get good at uh you know this sound that false prophet is known for no we always kind of push the boundaries a little bit so yeah there's definitely i mean dude you're just gonna have some hardcore just straight up death metal songs and then you're gonna hear some shit that you know might sound like orion or something you know metallica i mean it's kind of all over the place i mean you know we have really straightforward songs simple straightforward songs some that are a little more technical you know some that are more musical (laughs) Mm -hmm. i mean we've kind of always did that you know we don't really try try to stay in that just that death metal lane even though that's kind of what we're known for we're, we're, you know i guess most people know is that they kind of consider us like a thrash death metal band mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah well i mean it's yeah definitely possessed was one of the first bands that i thought of when i was listening to you guys um and i was really just i was impressed with your vocals in particular because of the, you were able, you're able to hit notes that I think a lot of people don't quite get how well you're able to hit these notes. It's one of those weird sort of technical things. When I was listening to it, you were kind of going up and down and you were hitting it, but it was like, it was so subtle that I couldn't trying to point it out to somebody was a lost cause is the best way I can put it. Other than another nerd (laughs) is the best way I can put it, which I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm going to ask you all kinds of weird things here at the end, but um, did you, have you ever had any like vocal training to do that? Yeah. God, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, It's like trial and error, man. It's like, you know, I, like I wish I could sing and I'm sure, you know, anybody that sings or even does vocals, like trying to get your own thing going is really hard. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, I've talked to a lot of people like, you know, side of the cross was more of that Metallica mega death ish type. And, uh, second death was definitely more of the morbid angel kind of alters era thing. And, um, it probably wasn't until I did like Firstborn. We did a single for um, Rage Records, and we did Firstborn. And I think Firstborn was probably the first time I really felt I did my own thing. 
Mm-hmm. You and know, vocal wise. What 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 do you think it was that? I mean, what was it that kind of triggered in your mind to to do something different? Was there? I mean, was there a process, or was it just kind of like you're doing it and you're just like, oh, I'm gonna try this. You know, I really don't know. I mean, I. <sighs> I don't know if I was necessarily looking for certain, something certain to do, but I know I wanted a certain tone. Like, I didn't want to sound like George Corpse Grinder. Mm-hmm. I didn't want that low. Mm-hmm. I can do that if I really have to. And, of course, I can't really do a King Diamond High. Mm-hmm. Which I wish I could. Man, there aren't too many. <laughs> but, I, you know, I know, like, my vocals, like, I guess what I get a lot of times is people can actually understand what I'm saying if you listen to death metal. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I kind of like my stuff being clear, but, I, I, you know, leaning towards the deeper vocal, even a little higher sometimes. Mm-hmm. I know live, probably more so live, I'm kind of more all over the place. I'm, I'm lower and higher than like the recordings. Oh yeah, kind of like the uh, the live tracks that you had, uh, or Orlando on the, uh, the self-titled. Yeah. I, I could see that. I can hear that. Now that you mentioned it, I can hear what you're talking about. Yeah, in the studio, I'm more straightforward. Cause like I said, I'm not a great singer or vocalist. So I, I, I kind of, you know, so if you hear something in the studio, it's more straightforward. I did play around with some stuff, um, like in Divine, you know, adding some extra vocals that I, you know, uh, kind of give it some, you know, dimension or, some a little different, mm-hmm. but I, I kind of like keeping the songs where we can actually play them live. You know, I don't really want to add, you know, I've never been a big fan of doing so much stuff that we can't pull off live. So mm-hmm. I don't do a whole lot like that, but it just kind of fit the song. I thought it was kind of cool. It was, it's not really that drastic mm-hmm. know, between live and recording. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's, it's cool that you guys know that that's what you need to do because I, I feel like a lot of newer bands, when I hear them, they they hit these notes that are really high or really low, and it it does make me wonder like how comfortable they would be doing this for years in live venues and whatnot, and what kind of strain they might put on your voice in the long term. Oh yeah, well, I mean, like hell, a lot of bands you hear their album and then you go see them live they don't even sound the same. Like it, you don't, doesn't even sound like that band mm-hmm. because they've, they've overproduced it and they're doing so much stuff that they can't pull off at their level. Like if you're a big national band, like if, if you're like cradle of film and you want to use backing tracks or intros and play along with stuff, that's great. You're big enough to do that. Mm-hmm. But when you're a band at, our level or smaller, you know, we're an opening band. We're, we open for nationals. We don't have time to set up all this shit and make it work correctly. Like we don't have time for samples and play along with backing tracks. I mean, we need, we got to get out there, play our shit and get the fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I, I, I kind of took that like from the arena rock, you know, like when you listen to older arena rock stuff, it's like big power chords. It's not, 3,000 notes and it's not you know you want to be able to play it live and people will be able to understand it live that's mm-hmm. kind of how I look at it and, I mean we do play fast stuff but it's not constant yeah yeah I, and I, you know I mean that there you do have to look to the future that way just because you know the idea that you won't be able to fully do what you're doing now in the future. You know, it, 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 it's good to sort of, I guess, have a retirement plan on some level. I've, cause I, I talked to a, a band a few years ago where the singer on their first album, his, his register was pretty high and it sounded really good. But then I think on their third album, he went way lower. And he started singing all the stuff from the first album much lower. And I asked him about that. And he was like, yeah, when I was in my early 20s, I thought I was going to live to, live forever. And he's like, now I'm pushing 30 and my vo- voice is going out. I, I got to make an adjustment. I got to do something. You know, he's like, I would have I would have told stupid younger me not to do that. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, man, I mean, like, you hear all these comments, you know, like, Don Dockin, you know, sounds like shit now. Mm -hmm. Well, goddamn, dude, he's old as shit. (laughs) But, you know, you can't, you can't go get a new voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like, I I hate that they get ragged like that, but, you know, you got to give them perks. They're out there still doing it. Yeah. uh, but, you know, I get it, man. I mean, you know, okay, he doesn't sound as good as he used to. He's not fucking 30 years old anymore, man. <laughs> right? I mean, when that guy was young, I goddamn, he was smoking. Hell, he was giving vocal lessons to Klaus Maine from the Scorpions. I mean, you know, like, goddamn. This, oh, this guy's no the real deal. I mean, <laughs> so it, it kind of sucks being like a real singer, you know, like, like you said, trying to pull off, you know, do that stuff when you're younger and then trying to pull it off in your thirties and then your forties. And mm-hmm. you know, I guess the death metal stuff is a little more forgiving on that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I get, yeah. There's a little more room for error cause it's not quite as technical. <laughs> yeah. You can just growl a little more or something. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got to tell you, I got to give you guys props who, who do the growling. I, I mean, I'll do that shit for maybe five minutes just to impress my kids. But I mean, after that five minutes, I'm like, ah, yeah, I better quit doing this or I'm going to have laryngitis for about a month. Yeah, there. I mean, there's definitely a technique behind it. I mean, you know, everybody, and I'm sure everybody does their own thing because, you know, nobody showed any of us how to do this. You kind of learned it on your own trial and error and mm-hmm. what sounded good in your ears and you know, what you thought sounded good, what you thought people might like. So it's definitely interesting when you hear different people, like John is just, with NCAN, he's just like super fucking low. Like, I can recognize his voice. Any Anytime I hear John's voice, I can hear it because it's just so fucking low. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wh- which was even more bizarre when I actually talked to him because his voice was so, like, middle of the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's nothing there to indicate that he can sing the way he does on all those incantation albums. <laughs> yeah, when you hear somebody talk and then you hear which I'm sure it is with me with my southern accent. When people hear me talk, I'm sure they're like, God damn. <laughs> yeah, see, it's kind of funny when people move to the South and that aren't from the South. It's very much a culture shock, just verbally <laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you ain't the first one to say that. Like one of the guitar, one of the guitar players in uh, Monstrosity, you know, we were talking before we played with him, and then when I got up on stage, he said, "Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to sound nothing like that." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, 
that's going to do it for this episode of the Piedmont Triad Podcast. I'd like to thank Paul for taking a few minutes to chat with us, and I want you to make sure to go check out False Prophet on their Bandcamp page or to listen to any of their music on any of the major streaming outlets. Also, make sure to follow them on their social media pages. Facebook at False Prophet NC, Instagram at False Prophet NC, and make sure you grab tickets to see their appearance at the Carolina Chainsaw Massacre Festival at either carolinachainsawmassacre.com or go to a Hippo Records in Winston-Salem or in Greensboro. Also, again, a big thanks to Matt Smith and the Cowboy Spankers for letting us use their tune, Not Tonight, as our theme music, and I want to make sure to tell you to go check them out on their Bandcamp page. Also, thanks again to my friend and artist Brian Falk for doing all the logo artwork. And a big thanks to you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the Piedmont Triad podcast and leave us a review on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts and follow us on Instagram at Piedmont Podcast or Facebook Piedmont Triad Podcast. Also, be sure to check out heavy-vinyl.com, our online rock and heavy metal vinyl website where you can grab new metal and rock vinyl releases as well as all of the Piedmont Triad Podcast episodes. Until next time, Triad. She keep on moving You like the devil when the sun goes down Stay away from me well, I'm too far gone There ain't nothing here to see babe. Just move along